program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. San Diego Police calling all cars. Attention all cars, broadcast 82. 5 1. A Chinese merchant has been found murdered in the store. That's all. Thousands of you who listen to this program tonight will drive into a Rio Grande station tomorrow and buy Rio Grande cracked gasoline. As the attendant fills your tank, you'll probably notice other brands of gasoline priced a few cents less per gallon. To reassure you that you are still getting more value for your money, even though you pay a couple of cents more per gallon for Rio Grande cracked, let me give you some technical information. Cut price gasoline is not good for your engine because it does not burn completely. Do you realize that inside your cylinders at least 9,000 separate fires are started, burned and extinguished every minute? Unless your gasoline burns completely in a split second, it goes to waste and ruins your motor oil. In Rio Grande Crack, you have a balanced gasoline with some parts that ignite instantly for fast starting, other parts that burn rapidly to give you acceleration, and the heavy parts that give you power as they burn. The famous Rio Grande cracking process separates gasoline to these three parts to ensure that it burns evenly and that no power is wasted. If you use uncracked, cut-price gasoline, you get unbalanced performance. Some cheap gasolines are all flat, but they start fast, and then they lack speed and power. Because the heavy units of power are not cracked up, they fail to burn completely. These heavy, unburned parts cause carbon. They destroy the oil seal around your piston. They dilute your crankcase oil so fast that it's often ruined in 200 miles. Your motor keeps on running, it's true, even on the cheapest gasoline and the thinnest oil. But every mile means weight, wear, and repair bills that cost you many times the few pennies you save on cut-price gasoline. That's one reason why so many western cities that keep records of automobile operating costs specify Rio Grande cracked gasoline. It powers more police cars and emergency engines than any other brand. And now we are honored to welcome back to Calling All Cars the chief of the San Diego Police Department, George M. Sears. Good evening, Sam. I wonder how many of you citizens listening to this program realize how important little things might be to the solution of a different, difficult case. In the story selected tonight, all the wisdom and guile of the Orient was matched against the patience of American priests and, as usual, the priest won. Only those who have attempted to solve a major a crime in which Orientals are involved can appreciate the difficulty to be faced. Hours of work must be done, where minutes might suffice when working with members of other races. For that reason, this story tonight is most interesting, because it proves once again that no criminal is smart enough to avoid leaving some clue, thus proving again that time does not pay. tonight is laid in San Diego's old Chinatown, 15 years ago. As he is walking his beat, patrolman George Wilson is approached by Quan Chok, a venerable Chinese merchant. Are you uh, helping me, please? I need very much help from policeman. Yeah, what's the matter, Quan? I wait for my friend, the Saiwa. I wait one, two, maybe three hours. We go doctor, but Saiwa, he no come. I go Saiwa store. So he locked, maybe uh, saw something uh, wrong with Saiwa. Well, maybe he went without you. Oh, no, he not do that. Uh, maybe so you come open up for Saiwa's store. Well, I don't know whether I should or not. Oh, uh, yes, yes, you must come. Which store is it? Uh, just down there are two, three doors. Uh, store with uh, lead front. Well, uh, first, let's ask that lady at the next house whether she's seen Saiwa. Oh, uh, very well, I ask. Oh, she say, she see 
light in the middle of night. Uh, then she hear a big sound noise coming uh, from Shy White Place. Oh, maybe we ought to investigate. Oh, yes, please. You open place up, huh? Yeah, I'll try some keys on the door. Oh, that won't do. Oh, that one. I guess we'll have to break it in. Well, something out of place in here? Uh, we go back room. Oh, sing ta li fang Cut to pieces. This is a job for the homicide squad. <laughs> In a very few minutes, Detective Sergeant Sears, Chadwick, and F.C. Bowden, state narcotic inspector, are on the scene. Skull fractured. Found labor this heavy door spring. A bloody hack for the blood stain cleaver. Here's a bloody handprint, Captain. Oh, yes, and bloody footprints leading outside. Wilson. Yes, sir. Has his handprint and his footprint photograph. Yes, sir. I asked you to come along, Inspector, because you're so familiar with these Chinese. What do you know about Say Wolf? Why, he was one of the best liked men in Chinatown. No enemies? Not that I know of. He does a private banking business. Worth plenty of money, he was. Oh, and robbery might be the motive. Yes, it might. Suppose we take a look at the stage. Must be in the other room. Yeah, this way. There it is. Look. Wilson. Yes, sir. Have a safe expert open the safe. And then bring this spring and the cleaver in as evidence. Yes, sir. Also bring in Quan Jock. I want to talk to him. I've just opened up that safe, Captain. Good. What did you find? Nothing. What? Absolutely empty. What do you make of that, Inspector? Was the safe, Jimmy, to tap it with? No. Apparently it had been opened normally and then closed and locked. I should say, then, if Siwa had any money in the safe, and it's reasonable to assume that he did, that someone he trusted inveigled him into opening the safe himself. And murdered him, stole the money, and locked the safe. Someone he trusted, eh? How about Quan Chuck? They were the best of friends. It might have been any one of a hundred Chinese who did business with Taiwan. It would be a neat job to question them all. I never saw a Chinaman yet who would talk when he didn't want to. Nevertheless, I'm going to begin with Quan Chuck. Has Wilson brought in Quan Chuck yet? Oh, is that so? Very well, send him in. Quan Chuck came himself. He's outside asking to see me. Uh, Captain Morris? Yeah? You find the fellow who will kill my friend? Well, I'm going to try to. Yeah, uh, $5,000. You give me what? $5,000? Okay. Yes, uh, here. $5,000. You count, huh? Who's offering this reward? Me, I give 1000 Four other Chinese that give 1000 Who? Oh, they, you know, like the telling name, uh, all but one. Who's that one? Quan Chi, he one of them. Quan Chi? You know him, Captain. He's a silk importer. Oh, yeah, I know him. Ah, uh, Quan Chi, he good friend Sai Wa, too. You're sure you're not posting this whole reward between you? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, five of us. Uh, we make up money all it together. Who do you think killed Sai Wa? Oh, don't know, but uh, you find him. Make this unimportant person very glad. Did Sai Wa have a lot of money in that safe? Oh, Sai Wa has money, yes. How much? I do not know. You, uh, you'll find murderer? Well, we'll try. And Juan Jock, you'll help us, won't you? Oh, yes, I have. All right. Now I'll let you know when I want to talk to you again. I have all right. I go now. Okay, Juan. Thanks. Well, these $150 bills seem to eliminate Juan Jock. Looks like it. Anyway, I know the old man, and I don't believe he'd do it. Next step seems to be to go over Sidewalk's book and see how much money they actually took. Better call the Chinese consulate and have them send a man over to check them for you. I'll do that right away. And Quan Chi, did the book show that he was a depositor? Yes, Quan Chi was a depositor. Mm, go see who that is, will you, Carson? Yes, sir. I want to see Cy Wah. What about? I got a letter for him. Uh, come in, please. Where's Cy Wah? Uh, come right in here, please. Say, what is this? I don't see Cy Wah. Where is he? I'll take care of your letter. I'm supposed to deliver it to Cy Wah himself. Well, Cy Wah's dead. 
mistake. Murdered. And we're from headquarters. Give me that letter. Oh, but I don't think I can. Hand it over. Do you want to keep out of trouble? Let me have that letter. Okay. Here it is. Chinese. Can you read it, Mr. Fung? Yes, let me see. It says, Why, friend, say I was, do you spurn my most generous offer? You are old and highly respected and would not be suspected by the ignorant and arrogant American. Surely, I hope you will see the wisdom of our using your store for our mutual benefit before it becomes necessary for me to use more persuasive means. It is signed T. T is a Japanese narcotic boss, the Iwanaka. What do you know about this note, Millie? Nothing. Who gave it to you? Oh, one of the boys in a saloon in Tijuana. He gave me five bucks to deliver it. You work for T, don't you? I never heard of him. Take a look through her purse, Carson. Hey, look here. You can't do this. Quiet. Yep. Here's a bend to the stuff. That's fine. Send her up to the station with Wilson. What for? I ain't done Possession nothing. Possession of narcotics is a misdemeanor. You're under arrest. Now, Wilson, yes, sir. Look this young lady for possession of narcotics. Why, you big baboon, you've got a lot of nerve. Come on, young lady. Take your hands off Come of me. Come on now, you better Now, listen, I ain't gonna... Oh, there's a narcotic angle to this thing. Yeah, we better round up all the hop heads we can find in Canada. Right, now get in touch with Chief Montana and Tijuana and have him question Key. Maybe Cy Wall was put on the spot by Key's mark. Bowden and Detective Sergeant Sears, armed with John Doe Warren, round up more than 50 Chinese suspects during the afternoon and early evening. And when Chadwick and Carson return to headquarters to question them, they are met by Quan Chok and Quan Chi. Hello, Quan Chok. What's on your mind? I just see uh, my friend Quan Chi. He wants to talk to you. Oh, how do you do, Quan Chi? This humble person is infinitely on earth. Why have you not arrested the murder of my friend, Saiwa? Well, yeah, we're doing all we can. It is not enough. You arrest two of my friends, but you do not arrest Saiwa's murderer. Well, who are the friends we've arrested? Uh, Henry Duxon and Tong Gao. Why do you arrest them? I want them released. Impossible, Kwon We must hold them until we investigate their alibis. Uh, they are not guilty. They are my friends. I'm sorry, Kwon but it's necessary. You'll have to permit us to make this investigation in our own way. You cannot insult honorable men in this fight. And you can't dictate how we run our police department. Good evening. <laughs> man's all upset about his friend's death. Yes, but you're quite right in handling him the way you did. I beg your pardon, Captain. Yes, sir? Uh, Chief Montana, Pia Wanna, called while you were out to dinner, and he said he'd be in shortly to report about she. Good. Yeah, and I've got a report on the bloody hand mark you found at the scene of the crime. Yeah? What is it? The Sai Wah's own hand What? Yep. And the cleaver we found has been identified by Fung Chuck as belonging to Sai Wah, too. Now, oh, isn't that sweet? Our only clues circle right back on themselves. According to all we've discovered, Cy Wah robbed his own face, murdered himself with his own cleaver, and then left his own fingerprints with which to identify himself as his own murderer. Oh, am I going nuts? Oh, you're just handling an oriental homicide. Well, yeah. Oh, send him in. Steve Montana's outside. Now we'll find out about the Tijuana dope angle. Oh, good evening, Chief. When is no, senor. You know all these gentlemen, I believe. Oh, see, indeed, yes. Well, did you question Key? He admits writing the note, but he was much surprised when I told him Saiwa was murdered. I asked him about the threat, and he said that he mean to turn Saiwa over to the authorities for diamond smuggling if he did not enter into a business arrangement with him. Oh, diamond smuggling enters into the plot. I do not believe that part of it. I think that Key would have sent his hatchet men after Saiwa if he had refused to play... Or you say, play ball with him. Then maybe Key did have him killed. That wouldn't account for the robbery angle. No, no, I am convinced that Key knew nothing of his death until I talked to him. Well, we're just as far now as we were this morning when Wilson discovered the body. Yes, Sergeant. A note for you. Who from? That girl, Millie Mur- Murphy, we booked for possession. Ah, let me have it. Ah, maybe this will develop. Hmm. <laughs> he wants to talk to me. Bring her in, Sergeant. Yes, sir. 
You know, there's nothing like a few hours in jail to make him loosen up, Mr. Chief. It usually works. And do you know this Millie Murphy? Millie Murphy. Uh, fat and blonde? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, yes. She's one of T's girls. That's what I thought. Here she is, Captain. Come on in, Millie. You wanted to talk to me? Yeah. Alone. Okay. You gentlemen will excuse us. Of course. Just wait outside a few moments. Yeah, and don't try tuning on no dictaphone. All right, Millie. What's on your mind? Listen. You found a deck of snow on me, and I got some information I think will help. But I don't like cops, see? I won't even try to make a trade with you. What do you mean? My freedom for my information. Well, I can't promise. I told you I ain't asking for anything. I don't like cops, and I wouldn't lower myself to make a deal with you. I'm giving you this information because I like Cy Wa. He was a good guy, and I'd like to see the rat that bumped him off taken care of. Okay. What do you got? Look here. That bindle you found on me was for Quan Chi. He, down in Tijuana, wanted to use Cy Wa as an agent instead of Quan Chi. Mm -hmm. Cy Wa was on the level. He wouldn't play, but he figured he could get him in line. If he had, Quan Chi would have been bounced. Now, what do you think? Well, it sounds fishy to me. Huh? Okay, I'm giving it to you for what it's worth. Like Quan Chi claims to be Cy Wall's best friend. Uh -huh. He was in here a little while ago, highly indignant because we hadn't caught the murderer yet. Sure, covering up. Quan Chi's smart. I wouldn't expect a dumb flatfoot like you to understand it. Oh, is that so? Yeah, that's so. Well, all right, I'll work on your tip. Well, I don't care whether you work on it or not. Only let me get back to my cell. I'm losing my beauty sleep. Sergeant, take this girl back to her cell. Yes, sir. And ask the other gentleman to come in. Right. Well, how about it? What did you find out from her? I don't know. Probably a pipe dream. But I'm so dizzy now, I'll work on any tip. What do you mean? Just this. We're going to raid Quan Cheese tonight. Officers find Quan Chi and his beautiful young wife smoking opium. Quickly bundling him off to jail, Chadwick and his men search the place. Behind Quan Chi's storeroom, they find his office. Yeah, well, this is a pleasant place to work. No windows, no air, and only one electric light. What's that to a Chinaman when he has this? What? Opium, cocaine, and morphine right here in the desk drawer. Let me take a look at it. Hmm. That's a personal supply, but large enough for an excuse to hold him for questioning. Captain, Captain, look what I found. What? A pair of blood-stained slippers. Blood-stained slippers? Where did you find them? Outside in the alley in the garbage can. That's what we're looking for, boys. If these slippers match the footprints found at Cy Walls, we've got the murderer. That night, the Bureau of Identification examines the slippers, finds that they fit the footprints found at the scene of the crime find that they are size seven and a half. When Sergeant Chadwick tries to discover which of his suspects wears size seven and a half shoe, he meets another baffling disappointment. Oh, hello, Bowden. I'm glad you dropped in. I'm up a tree again. What do you got there on the desk? These are the shoes of Henry Duck Chung, Song Chow, and Quan Chi. And here are the blood-stained shoes we found at Quan Chi's. Well, whose foot fits the bloody shoe? They all do. They're all seven and a half. Why? Yeah. Seems that every Chinese in San Diego wears the same size shoe. Well, I'm beginning to be stumped myself. And ask Quan Chuck to come down and help us. But first, I want Quan Chi to have a look at these. He's waiting outside. Uh... Bring Quan Chi in, please. Captain, I am one of Simon's best friends. I have offered reward with the capture of his murderer, and you are at me. Now, just a minute, Quan. Calm down. You shall hear from the Chinese government about this. You have caused me to lose faith. No, relax, will you? I want to ask you a question. What is the question? You ever see these shoes before? Where did you get them? I found them behind your house last night. They are mine. I threw them away a week ago. Or did you throw them away night before last, after you murdered Chai Wong? excuse me, I am innocent. You will pay. You see. You will pay. Ah, oh, take them away, Sergeant. Yes, sir. And Captain, Quan Chalk is waiting to see you. All right, send him in. Yes, sir. 
Come along, you. Uh, come in, Quan Duck. Have you uh, elected the Quan Chi? I suspect him of murdering Tsai Wu. Oh, but uh, that does not seem possible. I found these shoes outside his house last night. They fit the bloody footmarks of Tsai Wu's. Oh, uh, please uh, let me see those shoes. There you are. Uh, uh. Why, these belong to Tsai Wu. What? Uh, yes, these are Tsai Wu's shoes. See, he puts this mark in all his shoes. An embroidered star. I give up. There's nothing about this case that makes sense. And to baffle the police further, a blood-stained, lightweight suit is found buried in the sand near the bayside. Investigation of laundry marks found in the suit reveals that it had been worn at various times by Tong Chao, Henry Duck Chung, and Quan Chi. The investigation is caught in an insidious, vicious circle. And Chadwick and Sears decide to act. With the detail of two men, they return to Quan Chi's uh, Chi shop. You know, it seems a shame to tear the joint up, Chadwick. I know it, but I'm convinced that this Quan Chi knows more than he's willing to tell. As it says in the play, he protests too much. What play? Oh, never mind. What I mean is he makes too much noise about his innocence. Whatever he's hiding, we're going to find it, and we have to take this place apart stick by stick. Okay, boys, start on these door casings. These Chinese go in for hidden panels and stuff like that. I'm going to look through these closets. Yes, Captain? Better go over these walls in plain and tap them for all the hiding places. Okay. Knife 
of Hong, the executioner. It wasn't so many years ago that a merchant called Wing Lo killed a man of his out here in San Diego. And his tongue settled the affair with this knife. And the mighty muscled Hong raised the knife high above his head and brought it down with all his force. The knife quivered in the block, just as it's quivering in the floor there. But Wing Lo's head lay silently beneath it. Oh, now then, I'm forgetting. You saw that execution, Quan Chi. My inferior intellect is unable to comprehend why I am asked to witness this ridiculous demonstration. Oh, oh, no reason at all. I was just reminiscing about old times and wondering whether Sai Wars Tong still had an executioner as capable as Hong. Which would be of no concern to me. Well, it might, if you compel us to give you your freedom. My undistinguished attainments in the art of logic prevent me from understanding the progress of your argument. Then these may help. You recognize them? The weapons of the hatchet man. Yes. This one here is particularly interesting. See those brown marks on it? I see. That is the dried blood of Sam Gee. Remember him? I do not. Sam Gee died the death of a thousand cuts in San Francisco for some trifling offense, such as killing his friend. And parts of his dismembered body were found all along the highway, all the way south to San Diego. And they say the dead man's brothers got their revenge. I will not permit my presence to be contaminated by such swinish mouthy. Now, now, Quan, relax. Just one thing more. I got a letter from Sai Wong's brother in San Francisco this afternoon, and he begs me to tell him who murdered Sai Wong. He has promised his ancestors vengeance on the murderers of his brother. And you know what that means, Quan Chi. Should Sai Wa's brother set out to find his murderer, we would be powerless. And nothing we could do would prevent another murder. A horrible murder, preceded by exquisite torture. Your murder. I would say that the only place, safe place for Sai Wa's murderer would be behind the thick walls of San Quentin. Or dead, painlessly by a jerk of the rope rather than by the death of a thousand cuts. Don't you agree with me, Quan Chi? It is written in the third book of Quan Fu The wise man chooses the swirling stream in preference to the path by the fire dragon's cave. I am guilty. I kill Saiwa. Henry Duck Chong, Quan Chi's accomplice confessed quickly when he learned that Quan Chi had made a full confession implicating him. Their only motive was to dispose of Tsai Wa because he refused to participate in Quan Chi's dope smuggling activities. Both were sentenced to life in San Quentin Penitentiary, where Henry Duck Chung died a few years ago. Catching criminals is only part of police work. Police try equally hard to prevent crime. The Rio Grande Oil Company helps the police do both. Police officials of the West unanimously praise this Rio Grande radio program for showing so effectively that crime does not pay. And they also praise Rio Grande for producing the faster, more powerful, more economical gasoline that has been specified for more police cars and emergency equipment wherever it is sold than any other brand. Rio Grande has the double advantage of owning the finest cracking plant in America and the exclusive western right to the patented Sinclair cracking process. Thus, Rio Grande Cracked has qualities found in no other gasoline. Try it. It costs you no more. Police calling all cars, attention all cars. Cancellation broadcast 82. 
regarding a Chinese hatchet murder. Suspect in this case now in custody. That's all. dramatized on future broadcasts are described in the monthly Calling All Cars News. Ask for your free copy from any Rio Grande service station. Charles Frederick Binsley, 